So how do we address this issue? So we know this is a major issue, the gap between the rate at which the processor works and the you know time it takes to fetch data from the memory. So what we use is something called a cache. It's essentially a smaller but faster memory that sits between the processor and the uh, main memory. It turns out to be much costlier, so you can't you know, have your entire memory being replaced by uh, this. Uh, but it turns out that you know you can actually gain a lot by using a cache and even small caches uh, help you a lot. So how does a cache work? So this is your main memory. This is your data path. And this is your processor. And what we do is that we put a fast uh, memory right next to the processor. Okay, when, whenever the process access, processor accesses some data, if that data uh, resides in the cache, it is simply returned from the cache. Okay, I'm giving a very simplistic view of what a cache does. Right, so if, if data is in cache, get from cache, otherwise, get data from main memory and store it in the cache. And now what happens is that, uh, so the latency to main memory was something of the order of um, 100 nanoseconds or 100 cycles, but the latency to the cache is just a few cycles, right? It can be as small as one cycle. Does cache always give you benefits? No, depends on the code. Uh, if I'm doing something like, let's say, something that, that is just accessing data randomly in the memory, it's not going to give me a lot of benefit. Uh, but if I'm uh, accessing data in a, in a structured way uh, in the memory, it gives me a lot of so let's again look at the same example that we were looking at earlier. So we'll look at matrix multiply again. Right, so we wanted to compute C is equal to A times B. We are assuming that all the matrices are of size 64 cross 64 and each element is a four byte floating point number, right? So let me assume that my cache size is let's say 64K. Okay, what is the total size of matrix A in bytes? There are 64 times 64 elements and each of them is four bytes, right? So the size of A is 16384. Okay, let's, let's compute in terms of K, right? So this is 16K. Similarly, uh, matrices C and B are also of the same size. Each of them is 16K and so the total data size is 48K. So all of it fits into cache. I can fit all of this in the cache if I want to. So uh, how would my matrix multiply perform now? Let's assume that the cache gives me a latency of one nanosecond or one cycle. And the main memory as before is giving me a latency of 100 cycles or 100 nanoseconds. So now what happens is that first time that I access an element, it's going to have to go to the memory and get it. Right, which is going to take 100 cycles or 100 nanoseconds. But every subsequent time that I access the data, it's going to come from the cache. Right? So let me just uh, simplify it. Let's just say that I just load all the data into the cache first. Right? Although that's not the way you do it, but let, let me just assume that just to do a simple analysis. Right? So we load all matrices into the cache. How long is that going to take? 100 nanoseconds into into 64 into 64. I don't need to load C, so I'll just stick with two. Right. 
so that's about um, 800 microseconds 32 times 32 is about a thousand it's 1024 right so I'm going to approximate 1024 with thousand for now so 800 microseconds is what it takes to load the matrices uh, let's say now I start the execution of the code right what did I have I had the instructions load r1 from address in r3 load r2 from address in r4 this was actually fetching aik this was fetching bkj and finally I was doing an mad into r5 from r1 comma r3 right that's the uh, instructions and then I was repeatedly executing this now how long is it going to take to execute each one of these instructions one nanosecond well I'm talking about throughput right I'm, I'm assuming that uh, we are pipelining right and the latency the memory latency is going to be one nanosecond right and if I'm able to get perfect pipelining then each of these instructions will complete in one nanoseconds right? and then I do this m add I increment the addresses I go back and so on so actually it's going to be a few cycles that are going to execute right so let me just approximate this and say that maybe it takes 20 cycles I'm just taking a loose approximation right suppose it takes about 20 cycles to execute one iteration so this is much better than 200 nanoseconds that used to take earlier right because the data is coming from the cache so your uh, memory latency is just one nanosecond so you're able to do the operand fetch within a single cycle what is the total number of iterations I have to do n cube so that's about uh, 256 256,000 around 256,000 right that's the number of iterations I'll have to do and I've just taken a bound of 20 cycles that's roughly the time it's going to take so what's the total time Two fifty six K into twenty nanoseconds, and what's the number of operations I've performed? Two N cube, right? Number of multiply adds. I'm counting multiply and add separately. Two into sixty four cube, right? And this is sixty four cube into twenty. Right. So, what is my flops? So, that is the number of ops divided by time, which is 2 into 2. So, this time is actually not just 64 cube into 20, but uh, 64 cube into 20 plus 800 microseconds right so this is going to be plus 800 microseconds so what is 64 cube uh, 64 cube is 256k so this is 512k 256k into 20 plus 800 microseconds this is nanoseconds which is 512k divided by 5120 microseconds plus 800 microseconds this is about uh, somewhere around 90 megaflops what kind of performance was I getting without the cache we were getting about 10 megaflops right and with the cache we are getting about 90 megaflops well there is a lot more you can do so the idea here is how we can utilize the cache right to overcome the memory latency 
uh, issue. So what happens if you have very, very large matrices to multiply, which don't fit in the cache? So what's the important part here, right? The important part is that once you have fetched the data, you want to reuse it as much as possible. So how does the cache work, right? So you have some data loaded over here. There are different locations, right? So when we say 64K cache, and let's say the word size is four bytes, then it's essentially storing 16K words, each of four bytes, right? And what happens after you've accessed 16K elements? When you access the next element, what's gonna happen? It's going to replace one of these entries. It has to replace one of these entries, okay? And there are lots of different algorithms uh, for uh, doing cache replacement, uh, right? How the replacement is to be done, least recently used and so on, but we're not gonna get into that. But the important part to understand is that you have to make sure that if you've loaded some data, you're going to reuse it before you know enough accesses happen that this data gets thrown out. Eventually it will get thrown out when because the cache size is limited and if you're working on data which is of size more than 16k elements in this case, uh, eventually your data will start getting thrown out. So now if you have large matrices and you're working on large matrices, you cannot assume that all the matrices are going to be sitting in the cache all the time. So how do you, how do you write code that makes efficient use of the cache? Yeah, so I'll just give you a high level idea of how that's done, right? So if you want to multiply two matrices, let's say these are the two matrices, what you do is you divide them into blocks. This is something that we're going to get deeper into later in the course. We're going to focus a lot on linear algebra problems. So what you do is you divide your matrix into blocks and each of these blocks is of size 64 cross 64. Because we know that if we are working on a block of size 64 cross 64, then I can fit it into the cache, right? I can fit a block of A and a block of B and a block of C if each of them is, each one of them is of size 64 cross 64. So now suppose that this is my matrix A, this is my matrix B and finally I need the output in uh, matrix C. So I'll take a block view of all of them. What is this block? It's a sub matrix of size 64 cross 64. When you do C is equal to A times B, what do you get in this block? If I index these blocks, it's the 2 comma 2th block of C. So it's actually nothing but the product of second block row of matrix A with the second block row of matrix B. So it's the product of this with this plus the product of this with this plus the product of this with this plus the product of this with this. That's what this 2 comma 2th block is, okay? So if I want to do this, what will I do? How will I uh, make efficient use of the cache? First I'm going to load this block of A and this block of B into the cache, do the multiplication, store it in C, which is going to be in the cache, just this block of C. So that can be done quickly at, at the rate of 90 megaflops. Then I load these two blocks. I again do the matrix multiplication. Now all the data is in the cache. Again, I'm able to do it at the rate of 90 megaflops and so on. While computing C2, comma 2, right? I, I am doing all these operations these two blocks and then these two blocks and then these two blocks and then these two blocks. When I'm done computing C2, comma 2, block number 2, comma 2, then I need to basically write it back. Okay? Right? And, and I do this for all the blocks of C. So this is called temporal locality. So essentially what it's saying is that 